I saved $8,133 on my wedding without DIYing a ton of decor and still having the wedding of just my little girl dreams. It was everything I wanted and so, so much more. In fact, people were coming up to us during and after the wedding saying it was one of the best weddings they had ever attended, which is just so lovely to hear. All of this, even though I had set a budget of $24,000, what I actually spent was $15,867. And I want to tell you everything that I did so that I can help you save money too. So stay tuned. But first, my name is Katie Sauter and I'm a wedding planner. And if you are also planning your wedding, you might find the free wedding planning timeline linked in the description below helpful for you. Don't forget to snuggle up to that like button and tell that subscribe that its nose ring looks cute today. But keep it PG for me, okay? So if I am looking over here, it's because I can't possibly remember all 17 things that I wrote down. 18, sorry, it was 18 things. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying corrected by my own script. But anyway, all right, so here's everything I did. One, I stuck to every aspect of my budget and I pretty much always followed it. Every individual line I followed and every once in a while I was like, I went over, but it's okay. More on that in a second. Number two is that I actually did allocate 10% to just wiggle room. This allowed me to actually follow my budget a lot closer in that it was okay if I went over just a little bit in some areas as long as I went under in others and that 10% wiggle room really really helped for that. Number three, and now this is not always the case, but I chose an all-inclusive venue. So a lot of venues have hidden fees, mine did not, and that was one of the wonderful things about them. So, and it was just the most beautiful venue some photos. <laughs> Number four, it was a destination wedding. So even though it was in North Carolina and I live in North Carolina, we had friends and family coming in from all over, not only from this country, but from other countries. So in, within the United States, it was from Idaho, Washington, Washington DC, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts, uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and also Michigan, Ohio, Illinois, Colorado. We have friends from like all over. And, oh, and New Mexico too. But we also had friends coming from Finland and Saudi Arabia and Peru. Part of his family is from Peru. So it, it kind of was like, we have people from coming from everywhere. So that actually saved us a lot of money and it led to a smaller guest count. So even though we had invited 112 people, we knew we weren't going to get all 112 people. We actually had 58 total. And that was actually a really wonderful size because you could actually talk to everyone and have like real, like, I mean, still a brief conversation, but it wasn't just like a wave and bye, hello, there we go. It was very much like, oh, hi, how you doing? It was great, that was really wonderful. But because we had a destination wedding, our counts were reduced. And that was actually kind of pleasant and saved just a lot of money. Thousands and thousands of dollars of money. We also saved money by eliminating the wedding party. So instead of having bridesmaids, groomsmen, honor squad, whatever you want to call them, we just had our friends get ready with us on the morning of. It saved money for everyone involved because they didn't have to go out and buy dresses they'll never use again. And we didn't have to buy them corsages or bouquets or boutonnieres just to add to the floral cost. We didn't have to like do any gifts <laughs> which that sounds maybe bad but like it's often that a bride and groom will give gifts to their wedding party which is super reasonable but like for me it was just a gift to have them there alone because they flew from so far away and I was just so grateful that they were there for us. Number seven, I planned the wedding myself. I am a wedding planner. That would save me money because I planned the wedding on my own and I also know what I'm doing. <laughs> which helps a lot. And I'm not overly stressed by this kind of thing. I love the planning. That's why I do this. Eight, I snagged a videographer for only $900. And that was because my photographer has videography as one of his packages and he had a sale. And uh, we were like, oh heck yeah, but yes, we're gonna get that deal, obviously. So we tossed it in, even though we had not accounted for videography at all. And our wiggle room allowed us to do that, which was really nice. I also only DIY'd a select number of things, primarily decor. So we chose a beautiful, 
beautiful venue. And because it was a beautiful venue, we didn't need to get a ton of decor for it, which I highly recommend choosing a beautiful venue that doesn't need much. And that way that also saves you money just on the decor alone. But basically I just did like my sweetheart table with faux florals. I bought some boxes of faux florals and I now have this bouquet, very close to the bouquet. We actually split this into uh, 10 different um, little mini mason jars and this was our uh, aisle runners and now it's a bouquet in my house and number 11 I hired a friend who I truly trust to be my officiant that saved us about 300 to 600 dollars and I mean uh, be careful with this one because a friend make sure that they are not gonna be drunk Okay, just make sure that they're not gonna be drunk and that they won't ramble on or say weird things and make sure that they're actually like trying to train. If they want any tips, I do know that you could send them to the Unboring Wedding Academy. This is not sponsored, I just really love them. <laughs> Mark is great. He's very helpful for teaching officiants. Number 12, I hired my friend to do my makeup. And by hired, I mean she did it for me for free. Now this maybe didn't save me money because I had to buy all of my own makeup and I bought expensive makeup. But in another way, this is number 13, because I bought my own makeup, I also saved money because I'm, I'm actively wearing my wedding makeup right now. Not like in the fullest extent, like I didn't put on foundation, but I'm wearing the makeup that I did use for my wedding right now for more casual looks and in that way it actually like drags out that money longer so in the long term money spent versus time it is cheaper plus my friend is awesome and she did a really good job number 14 this is not a tip for everyone I have my own photo booth uh, through my business so yeah this one's not really a tip for everyone but I did bring my own photo booth <laughs> so that saved me money <laughs> Photos are usually like 600 to a thousand dollars. So they're usually pretty expensive, but not that bad relative to other things. If you wanted to spend a similar amount of money on a photo booth, one thing you could do is get one of those cute little uh, Polaroids and have that be part of your guest book instead. And you just DIY that instead of having like a traditional photo booth, you'd get the little prints instead. Number 15, I skipped the favors. So favors can often cost about 200 to $300. And that's one way you can save money is to skip them all together. Like I know, everyone was coming to this beautiful wedding, but the wedding itself is my gift to everyone else as well. And, and that's how I tend to think of it because they came out all the way. Yes, they came out all the way to see us, but I gave them a beautiful night to remember and everyone freaking loved our wedding and not a single person complained that there weren't favors. In fact, favors are like one of the things that most people leave behind. If you are hell bent on having favors, I do recommend this video here. I did talk about DIY favors that are pretty inexpensive and uh, really great alternatives to some of the favors that you might see all of the time at weddings. The kind that get left behind. You don't want them to be left behind. Number 16, another way we saved money was skipping the unity ritual during our ceremony. So we didn't go out and buy like the vase and the sand or the candle or like a tree or a pot or anything. Like we decided to instead have a raffle. So we just used one of the baskets at the venue and we just put a hand selected number of names into the raffle and when Tony picked one card and I picked the other we read off the names and uh, those two people came up to be signing our as witnesses so in the state of North Carolina at least in Forsyth County so this doesn't apply anywhere else other than Forsyth County Forsyth Fourth of County, North Carolina, where you need two signatures from witnesses. Not all states require that. I think even Colorado is like some locations you can have your pet like do a paw print as like a witness, which is wild. <laughs> it's kind of cute. But by having the raffle that saved us money because we didn't have to like actually go out and buy all these little things that we needed and set them up and worry about it. We just did the raffle. It was really fun actually. Like one of my friends looked like she had won the Oscar when her name got picked. It was hilarious. Number 17, this one probably saved us hundreds of dollars. We bought both our save the dates and our invitations on the same day, Black Friday. And we were like 
yeah, it's okay if they don't match because the knot, I think it was the knot had their invitations were 50% off, but not their save the dates. Whereas Vistaprint had 50% off the save the dates, but not the invitations. So what we did was we bought both of them at the same time and we just hoped for the best for those uh, addresses and that they would be correct. We had to later like correct like one address. It was fine. And we were like, maybe they don't fully match. It's okay. Wait, let me grab them. I'll show you. So this is what they look like. Aren't they cute? Aren't they cute? They don't fully match, but they're kind of color coordinated. And we were like, it's close enough. And no one commented on it, of course. So like, but like, it's really cute. And I'm really, really happy with it. And yes, this is a magnet. I was like, I love the magnet ones. I have all of the magnets on my fridge. But anyway, that's not helpful for you. I'll we'll move on. Number 18. This is something that's like one of those hidden things that can raise a lot of the cost. We skipped it all together. So what we did was we didn't give two poops if our colors didn't match. So we had a color palette and we were like, okay, we're going to try our best to be in that color palette, but I don't think it's going to necessarily be matchy matchy. And it looked great. <laughs> Because what you need is hues and shades of all of these different colors and you need the general idea of the colors, but you don't necessarily have to have everything matchy matchy. You can have, especially when you have a bright palette, um, it can be all different shades and hues. If you are actively seeking one color, that can really raise the price if you can't compromise and be like, oh yeah, well, as long as we keep adding in other colors, it'll be fine. So <laughs> it's kind of like what one of the things my art teacher taught me like in middle school it was like if you make that mistake keep going and it suddenly won't look like a mistake anymore and it will look like very intentional and i've kind of kept that to heart <laughs> And if this was helpful to you, you might want to check out my free wedding planning timeline linked in the description below. It's going to really help you plan your wedding. If you found this helpful, you may also find my other video about how to save thousands really helpful. Just check out this screen here.